My next guest is a member of the Medicaid redesign team. He represents the New York State Association of Counties, also known as NISAC. He is Steve Aquario, the executive director of that organization. You're back. Thanks for joining Thank me. You. Thanks for having you me. You know the problem is that you wear too many hats. Yeah. Aren't you on the mandate relief team too? I am. Yeah. Uh, the counties are involved with the state <laughs> in so many ways. Uh, I know. We, we, uh, well, which is good because you're a friend of the show, and so we can get information from you. We're, we're uh, very excited about that. So just to recap for people, mm -hmm. it's a little dry, but it's Medicaid, and Medicaid is, again, the largest share of the budget for the state. It's, it's uh, very expensive. They're spending a billion dollars every week. Right. Okay. So it's a big deal. The governor uh, established this task force to get, just to recap, to get out in front of what usually is a huge air war between the hospitals and the healthcare workers union 1199 and uh, Greater New York. And they used to have these huge fights to roll back Medicaid cuts and prevent them. This time they got to the table and everybody sat around and they agreed on cuts ahead of time and it was hailed as like political genius basically. But it, it didn't go away. You guys are continuing. So what's the point? Well, the meeting, uh, the, t the uh, Medicaid redesign team started, uh, I believe, in January, yep. in Feb right when the governor came into office. That was our meeting, and we worked very hard and produced a series of proposals, 78 proposals, to dramatically redesign Medicaid. It was a very different way of addressing the most expensive part of the state budget. Clearly, uh, I believe, was a very smart way mm -hmm. to bring together those who would typically be against you get them to the table, find out their concerns, and work towards consensus, and that's what we did. Okay, so going forward now, you're continuing to meet. So what are you tasked with at this point? So today the group was reconvened for the purposes of hearing subcommittee reports. Mm -hmm. There were nine subcommittees on various areas of ways to implement the Affordable Care Act to behavioral uh, health organizations or medical homes or health homes, uh, all sorts of subcommittees recommending technical recommendations for the next round. The Medicaid redesign team will then reconvene in November, November 1st, to actually vote mm. on another round of proposals and, and submitting a final report to Governor Cuomo to be included in the next executive budget. So the work continues. Right. So do you feel, you still feel, I would expect, that this is actually an active process as opposed to the mandate uh, team, which actually got a little bit of criticism because it was really dictated to from the second floor. This has been more collaborative, it seems like to me. Is that, do you agree with that? Without question, it's yeah. very organic. It, it's happening, it's developing from the public input, from the participants of this committee, really having a great deal to say about the outcome of this report, without question. Now, uh, I wasn't there, thankfully. <laughs> I'm not, not because I don't find Medicaid fascinating, but it was long. It was three plus hours. Nick Reisman, as people just saw, uh, was in fact there. And one thing that did not come up was uh, this Medicaid sex change issue, which I think that uh, we've talked about, I think, briefly. But there, there was an argument made by one of the subcommittees briefly, but they didn't. But they got slapped down because it made it to the press before it actually made it to you guys. That uh, covering transgender surgery in the long one run would be. Uh, it's expensive, yes, in the short run, but in the long run, better because it would cut down on suicides, et cetera. You didn't hear any of that, correct? No, we didn't hear about it. Uh, we did hear about it in the newspapers and the media reporting on it. It did not come up uh, at this meeting. What did come up is sort of uh, some of the benefits that are being included, some benefits being reduced or eliminated from Medicaid, and some actually being added. Hmm. So there was a discussion about uh, and a report to come about which benefits should be included as part of the Medicaid program. So, and that's interesting and, and actually very pertinent because New York is known as the Cadillac of Medicaid systems, right? When, at the time, then we had the opportunity to set up the system and opt in. We opted in for, like, everything. And then there have been some folks, I remember Rob Astorino was sitting right over there, mm -hmm. Westchester County executive, said we shouldn't cover dentures, for example, perhaps. Maybe we shouldn't cover, others have said eyeglasses. Maybe we shouldn't cover podiatry. Maybe we shouldn't cover mental health. Uh, is that, we're going to see some reduction of services, you're telling me. Well, we heard today that there are some that are not in the best interest of uh, the taxpayers and not in the best interest of the patients, so they're going to drop those, and then they're going to add some that may appear to be a little costly but actually save money in the long term. I think we, we need to hear more about this from the uh, subcommittee report. Uh, another uh, suggestion that, that had been floating around is the possibility of eliminating plastic surgery. Some of that stuff had been covered in the past. Is that something that you imagine will be uh, brought up? Did you hear anything about that today? I have not heard anything about that. But one thing I did here today, and it reminds me just how much this means to people from New York State or who live in New York State, that there's nearly five million people 
five million people actually enrolled in Medicaid and another million eligible for Medicaid. Right. That's one in three New Yorkers. That's how vast this program really is. Well, and there is a push to get more people involved. Is, is there not? I mean, isn't that part of what health care reform is all about? Well, ex exactly. And that was part of the discussion today. We have something called the Federal Affordable Care Act. Right. This is the, the president's initiative approved by the Congress that's coming to the states really uh, any day now to help uh, transition this program into New York State. A lot of the discussion today talked about the integration of Medicaid and this health insurance program. How will the two become one? Mm. And how, how will that affect New Yorkers? It's going to be difficult, I imagine. It's going to be difficult. And there was another interesting thing that came about today that I really took note of, and that was the actual savings that were being projected. And it was reported today that New York State is going to save the federal government $18 billion in the next f over a five-year period. That is a substantial amount of money to the federal treasury. I, that could be more than all other states combined. But by doing what? By putting more people into managed care? By offering fewer services? By simply meeting the requirements? And P.S. We have not yet met the health, ex the health exchange Correct. piece, right? Did you talk about that today? We, we, we did. There was a recommendation of one of the subcommittees that that legislation should be enacted mm. and begin the process of implementing that federal law. Um, another thing that was in the news this morning that you guys didn't talk about was a really interesting story uh, in the Wall Street Journal that the administration reportedly quietly authorized a $50 million bailout of an insurance fund for 1199, which is a very powerful health care workers union, reportedly in exchange for their agreement to participate in this process, this cutting edge political process that you talked about, and to sign off on what will be $2 billion worth of Medicaid cuts. You guys didn't talk about that, correct? No, that was, that was never brought up as part of the Medicaid redesign team discussions and uh, the union itself cooperated and worked well with others, as many others did around that table, to actually work together in consensus. And they were actually there. George Gresham, the president of the union, was there today, uh, briefly. I think he, was, he left a little early. Yeah, I think he was there briefly. He did participate in some of the other meetings uh, throughout the year. And it's a little bit troubling because it suggests that, you know, these are powerful people. Uh, it took a lot. They took a little bit of a haircut, but they also, as I was reminded um, by the initial reporting when uh, this agreement was coming together, and that's during the budget battle, that they also didn't fare too terribly uh, in this agreement. But the question that I have is if the hospitals and the healthcare workers are doing okay in some ways, and they're doing all right in part because they're in on the ground floor. So they're involved in the process, even though the health department has the ability to cut them if they don't cut themselves. What are you guys getting out of it? Well, first of all, we need everybody to be cooperating. So we need the healthcare industry, the unions, the providers, the hospitals, the nursing home, long-term care sectors, all the sectors need to cooperate. What are the property taxpayers getting out of this remains to be seen. We're cooperating with this effort. It is worth it in the end to redesign this program that makes sense for the taxpayers, brings about efficiencies, lowers costs, and improves health care outcomes. But the property taxpayers also want to see relief. So part of these recommendations are going to be for a state to take over the local share of Medicaid. It remains to be seen if that will actually happen. But it's a very important piece and a component as we implement this new federal program that the local government and start to see some fiscal relief. Without that, it's going to be serious problems. Okay, you brought that up today. Is that I, right? I did. You did. And what was the reception? Well, these were reports. So right. the reports will be ultimately uh, more formal and submitted for a vote in November. The reaction, I believe, was quite positive. I think people understand that, that, uh, that this third-party payer, if, if you will, property taxpayers, it doesn't really fit into this equation anymore. It's almost as if the county property taxpayers have outlived their useful life. Mm -hmm. The Rockefeller experiment is now over. Yeah, and also, as, as some viewers who, who are paying a lot of attention to the Medicaid issue might recall, we had a bipartisan trio of lawmakers who were here who are already advancing legislation that would do just exactly what you say, have the state take over, I think it's a five-year period, so phased in the county share of Medicaid, which really New York is one of just a few states that, ha that does it this way. That's right. And so it's very, it's very expensive to the counties. Of course, the state has a $2 billion uh, budget deficit, so we'll see where the money comes from. Uh, again, it's an ongoing issue. Medicaid I know we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about education aid, of course. It's a big issue for uh, the Speaker of the Assembly and a big issue for parents and a lot of people. So budget, we're talking about it now. And uh, I want to thank you, Steve Aquaria, for coming in. Thank you very much.